forgot to breathe because I'm too excited. <laughs> Can you tell I love Nasha? <laughs> I am so excited for this video and I have no idea why it took me so long to make a video like this because I get requested to talk about this all the time and I love to talk about fashion probably more than anything. Like you guys know, I'm a beauty, makeup, skincare, hair care, fashion junkie. But if I could only keep one of those things, home decor, like all of these aesthetic things that I love, if I could only keep one, it's fashion. It lives in me, okay? My grandma was a wedding dress designer and like handmade wedding dresses and bridesmaids dresses. My mom and dad both love fashion and shopping. Like I had no hope. I love fashion. And obviously when you're blind, you can't necessarily experience fashion the same way as everybody else. You can't flip through magazines for inspo. You can't look in store windows for inspo or look at the mannequins to figure out what to wear. Um, and even navigating how to, to figure out your closet and put together outfits can be challenging. So this video is for any blind fashion lover who might be struggling. If you are new to blindness and you are trying to figure out how to navigate the world of fashion now that you no longer have vision. If you are somebody who has never been into fashion but wants to get into fashion and doesn't know where to start, even if you're not blind, you might still find some helpful hints. Some of these are going to be really, really, really specific and others are going to be really broad suggestions, but I've got 11 tips as well as some examples here from my own closet. So let's just jump in with number one. Learn about it. I know that sounds super simple and basic, but people always ask me, how are you always on top of the trends? How do you always know it's cool? It's because I put the effort and the time into watching videos on YouTube, reading blogs, following fashion TikTokers. And I don't mean just people who do like outfit of the day videos. Those are great, those are fun. But I mean people who actually analyze fashion. I'm gonna link some of my favorite channels in the description box below. These are channels uh, or outlets or places that you can go to that are gonna break down Fashion Week. What was happening in New York Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. You can read about all the fashion weeks what designers are putting what down the runways. And obviously not everybody is as interested in fashion as I am. I know not everybody wants to know about what, you know, what Alexander McQueen was sending down the runway in the spring 2022 fashion show in New York Fashion Week. I get that not everybody is wanting to go that micro, but it's a really great way, like learning about the runway trends is a great way to learn about what's gonna trickle down to streets. And for me personally, whether I'm learning about, as I said, the more high fashion runway shows, or whether I'm just learning about what's hitting the fast fashion stores or, you know, retailers online to get inspo. It's, it's helping me to figure out what I can now pull on in my own closet. It's inspiring me of new trends that I might want to experiment with, pieces I already own existing. And it's just helping me understand when I go shopping, what am I going to be feeling? Cause I can't see those mannequins. I can't see those store windows. I can't look around and do a visual scan of the store. I am going around and I'm touching every single individual piece. And so for me, it's giving me a very good idea of what I might be expecting to feel. So that when I feel something unusual and different that I've never felt before, a silhouette, a fabric, I'm understanding where that's coming from. And for me, understanding and learning about fashion helps me to translate it into real life, whether it's shopping or putting outfits together on a daily basis. Number two, find somebody that you trust to go shopping with, whether it's a friend or a family member or a partner. Find that person in your life who you feel like understands your style and does not try to impose their style onto you, which can be a difficult thing because we all have personal preferences. And my style isn't necessarily the same style as everybody in my life but I found people I trust who I know are always going to be an honest mirror. I don't want you to tell me everything looks good. I'm not here to boost my ego. I, like I wanna know the honest truth. Does this color wash out my skin tone? Is this, you know, doing the best that it can for me? So I think finding those people that you trust and you know are gonna give you the honest truth is super, super helpful. Experiment with your style. You know, you don't have to have one specific style. I sure, Sure as heck don't. I have experimented with so many aesthetics over the course of my entire life. You guys have seen like eight years of it, my 20s on the internet of style, but I have experimented with style my entire life. I've never been married to one look and I think it's amazing when somebody like commits to just like being that vintage girly or being like that alternative girly, it's not me. I use fashion as a vehicle to express myself. 
And that means sometimes I'm feeling ultra feminine. Sometimes I'm feeling more grungy. Sometimes I'm feeling like street style. Sometimes I'm feeling real fancy and red carpet-esque and it's going to change. Um, but finding somebody who can kind of help you navigate that can be really helpful, which brings me to point three. If you don't feel like you know where to begin at all, you do not understand how to find a personal style and you do want to find that style identity, you're not as open as I am with experimenting with looks and you just want to have a really great like capsule wardrobe that suits your needs, suits your day to day. Uh, if you don't know what a capsule closet is, I will link some videos that describe it or maybe some articles down below so you can learn about a capsule wardrobe, which is certainly a great option and I'll kind of touch on it a bit later in this video. But if you just don't know where to start, you just want no fuss, no muss, you just want to find that perfect closet, I would really suggest saving up for, or if it's already in your budget, seeking out a stylist or a personal shopper. This is going to be a professional in the fashion industry. High-end stores like a Nordstrom often provides them, uh, or an Aritzia. You can often have a personal shopper that you work with at Aritzia. They will, if they see things that come in that are your size and style, they will text it to you and let you know. Um, they will come pull pieces for you when you're in store and put outfits together for you. They will help you curate a style. They will help you curate a wardrobe. Um, stores, like I said, like a Nordstrom or an Aritzia are providing that free of charge, but you can also hire a stylist to go to your favorite stores who perhaps don't provide that and help you get your closet sorted out. It's done, it's complete. You've got your capsule closet and you no longer have to worry about it. But if, obviously that is gonna come at a higher price tag than having the trusted friend or family member. Number four, I have pulled pieces from my own closet to demonstrate this. Hang your outfits on one hanger. This is one way I organize my closet. Organize your closet in a way that makes sense to you. It doesn't need to be color coordinated. We can't see that. It does not need to make sense to anybody else but your own brain so that you can independently navigate your own wardrobe without needing help as much as possible. And so I hang my outfits on one hanger. For example, this cardigan and this top, they are not a set. I bought them separately. They don't technically match, but I always wear them together. So I know I can feel for this cardigan. It's going to be my dark green cardigan. And then I have my dark green silky tank top underneath it. I know exactly where they're going to be. They're going to be together at all times. This is another example. I wear these pieces separately, but mostly I wear them together. Regardless of whether I want to wear them as two individual pieces or as a matching set, I have them hung together on this hanger. This is an example of a set that actually does match, but I, like I said with the first one and with this last example, I don't just hang ones that are matching sets. This is not a matching set. These are separate pieces. I happen to always wear them together. This is a cohesive outfit for me, so it all goes on one hanger. Three pieces, one hanger makes it so much easier to find the stuff. <laughs> Number five, prepare to see my bra, okay? Skin color bras and panties. Life changer, lifesaver. Now I totally get if, if you're a girly who just like feels like her sexiest versus self in like fun matching sets or colorful pieces, that's your prerogative. I'm not that girl. I only exclusively at this point in my life purchase nude bras and panties. Uh, this is obviously a very light tone because I am very fair skinned. Buy it to match your specific skin tone. Uh, thankfully nowadays you can find bras and undies in so many different tones of nude, but it's a lifesaver for me because I know every single day I'm grabbing a pair of undies and a bra that match and will seamlessly go under whatever color I wear, whether my shirt's white, whether my bottoms are a little bit sheer, I'm going to be concealed. Number six. Very similar, I exclusively purchase black and white socks. Now, occasionally I do get given a gift of bras or panties or socks that are not nude, black or white, and I just keep those in a separate section. And it is fun to have a few different pieces if I do wanna feel sassy or put a pair of socks on that like peeks through and is fun for the outfit, but I keep them separate. My day-to-day -day nude bras and undies and black and white socks are always together and in one specific place. And the black and white socks that I purchase are two different textures. So when I get them out of the wash, I'm able to properly put them together with the matching pair and I'm never gonna mix and match them because they're different textures. Uh, I like hue socks, just a personal preference. But yeah, white socks, black socks, that's it. 
I like having both a black and a white option, but if you didn't care for one or the other, obviously you could just do all one color. If mixing and matching socks is a part of your personal style, again, rock it. That's just not a part of my style regularly. It was when I was younger, but at this point, I just like a simple black and white sock that isn't going to take away from the rest of my outfit uh, unless I'm intentionally trying to put a fun sock on. Number seven, I am guilty. If I like something, I get it in two colors, especially black and white tops, because I always need them for layering. Or if I'm wearing like a funky pant or jacket, I just always need plain black and plain white long sleeve, turtleneck, short sleeve, tank tops. And if I find one that I like that fits me, I get them in black and white. And that gets difficult, right? So what I try to do is put them in different places in my closet. And that way I know where they are. I know that the left side is where the white one is, the right side is where the black one is. Obviously, there is gonna be room for error. 99.9% .9 of the time, that works for me personally. That's the only advice I have for this situation. If any of you are the type of person like me who when something works for you, you buy it in multiple colors, comment your advice down below for keeping the two things separated because Obviously, I personally memorize my closet by texture. I do have a photographic memory without the visuals. So I'm very, very fortunate in that way that memorizing every single piece of my closet by texture works for me. But obviously that falls short when I've got multiple things that feel the exact same. Number eight, today is an example of this and you'll see it a lot in my closet, tons of texture. We can't see the pattern. Yes, I know this is fabulously patterned, but I can't see that. So it's not as enjoyable for me. Uh, I still love mixing patterns um, or using a pop of pattern, but it's not for me the feature of an outfit. For me, I make the feature of the outfit the textures, playing with multiple textures. And you can do this all in one color, an all black outfit with a chunky knit sweater, a leather pant, a suede boot, playing with all those different textures, studs, things like that can be really fun. And even though you can't see any piece of that outfit, you still get to experience it. Right now I'm wearing a very patterned two-piece set. It's super stretchy. Comfort is always key. That is like my priority, number one all of the time, quality and comfort. And the more quality, you're getting in your pieces, the longer they're gonna last you and the less you have to worry about going out and redoing your wardrobe and replacing pieces. So if you do not like shopping and you enjoy avoiding it as much as possible and you want your life to be simple with fashion, getting those high quality pieces will definitely pay off. And if you cannot afford to do that, you know, full retail, shop the sales. Always shop the sales. That is always how I did it growing up. Sales section was always my best friend. Um, also, of course, Thrifting, there's so many options for online thrifting and in-store thrifting. It's had such a boom in the past few years, especially that there's really great options out there now. Um, but quality is always gonna be such a great option uh, and comfort because the more comfortable it is, the more you're gonna wanna reach for it. I'm just not gonna wear something without stretch. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. My hips fluctuate too much. I'm not gonna do it. Anyways, now that I'm gone off that tangent, this is a very patterned, I believe it's green, red and cream, pretty like Gucci inspired vibes. Um, and it's like a wide leg stretchy pant and then a zip up cardigan with this incredible faux fur trim on the collar and the cuffs. Makes me feel so fabulous, so fierce, and I get to enjoy it even though I can't see the pattern. Number nine, this kind of is nodding back to what I spoke about earlier, a capsule closet. Um, most capsule closets do incorporate color, what I would suggest if you really struggle with, with color, I like dopamine dressing. I like wearing lots of color because it makes me happy even though I can't see the color. But if matching colors is something that really stresses you out and you struggle with it, I would highly, highly, highly suggest doing an all neutrals wardrobe. So this would be similar to a capsule wardrobe, but you're just pulling everything neutrals grays, creams, whites, beiges, blacks, um, browns, perhaps if you want to, navies or army greens, khakis, blush pinks could be considered as like the, the neutral, the outskirt neutrals. They're like colored neutrals, but still gonna be very interchangeable and work with everything else. And this way you actually just never have to worry. Everything you grab will match one another color-wise. So that could be a really great solution. And then 
You can use your makeup or your accessories, shoes, coats, things like that as your pops of color. And you can also still have fun with neutral patterns. Number 10, since I just spoke about accessories, I would highly suggest, and this one's probably gonna be a preference for a lot of my fellow blind purse users out there, hands-free, okay? It's really hard for me. I love a top handle. I think they're so cute. Love a shoulder bag, adorable. They're not, they're not convenient. I know myself, I love a nice bag. It is the thing, one of the things that I treat myself with is a nice handbag purchase from time to time. I lust after certain bags, but I know it's gonna sit in my closet because it's a high maintenance bag and it's not convenient for me. I need a crossbody bag. I need a mini backpack or I need a belt bag, like a fanny pack. Those are exclusively what I will use. Here are two examples of my crossbody bags. And the reason I purchased these is not only because they have nice thick crossbody straps, but their materials. This one is quite literally made of plastic. And this one is made of nylon, a fancy plastic. These are wipeable. If I have a blind girl spill, no worries. I just wipe it off with a damp cloth. If my guide dog slobbers on these, no worries. I wipe it off with a damp cloth. So I'm not only looking for crossbody bags, belt bags, and mini backpacks, but I'm looking for the material that they are made of. Another example, and again, I'm, I'm showing, I like a fancy handbag. I admit it, I do. This goes for, you can find these exact type of bags in these exact types of materials at a much more affordable price. Here's a backpack that I have just used tirelessly for years. I've crammed it on planes, I've thrown it on the floor. It's a coated canvas. This is wipeable. I just wipe any schmutz right off of it. And so I don't have to worry that I'm ever gonna destroy my bags. So not only those styles that I'm suggesting, but those kinds of materials are gonna be much easier to care for than something like a leather or a woven material. And if you're looking for a good belt bag, particularly for the dog kiblets for the treats, I love the Lululemon ones. And there's also some good knockoffs I've heard of those on Amazon. Again, they're that perfect wipeable material, the best. I was literally struggling to get this boot off right before I sat down to film. Now I'm just thinking of things as I'm chatting because I'm talking about my favorite subject in the world. So they're just like pinging in my mind. But I was struggling to get this boot off because I put them on with no sock and they're a faux leather boot. It was a struggle. Here. I didn't put socks on with my leather boots and they're stuck to my skin. <laughs> when you're gonna go for heels as a blind gal, I highly suggest chunky, thick heel, platform at the toe. It is gonna be the easiest to walk in. I will admit that the platform at the toe can provide some issues if like me, you like to use your feet for tactile feedback. Forgot to breathe because I'm too excited. <laughs> can you tell I love fashion? So if you, like me, use your feet to feel what's under you, particularly because I'm not a cane user, I, I do that. I would avoid the platforms. I can't, I just love the platforms. I can't do it. I sacrifice it. It's risky, it's dangerous, but I, you know, I take the risks for fashion priorities. You know what I mean? But I will say, avoid the platform if the tactile feedback is super important to you, but definitely, definitely always do the chunky heel. It's gonna give you the best balance and support and balance can already be tricky enough when you're blind. And when every step is an unknown and you might twist your ankle, this is wild, but I literally have hyperflexible ankles from overstretching the ligaments in my ankles from how much I've rolled them over the years from walking in high heels on uneven surfaces and having blind girl accidents. I'm quite literally prioritizing fashion over safety, but it's fine. We all have our vices in life. We all have our risky behaviors. That's one of mine. And finally, Number 11, number 12, I don't even know where we're at at this point. This is gonna be a very obvious easy one to most of you, but I also know people come to my channel at every step of their blindness journey. And there are people who, as obvious as it might sound to you, if you're advanced in your blindness journey, some people do not know these things exist. If you still want to wear the color, you do not wanna make that sacrifice, but you are struggling with identifying colors in your closet and pairing outfits together, use a color detecting app or a device like the Orchem My Eye to help identify. I will admit to you, they are not perfect. If you are like me and you wanna know the details, well, what kind, how bright is the red? What are the undertones? Is it a blue undertone, a neutral undertone or an orange undertone? These things make a difference to me. Why? Because I can't see the color? It's because I, Think about these things on an intellectual level, which is why I talked so deeply about point number one, why I study fashion. 
I like to know these things. So if you are like me and you really like to know those things, unfortunately, color detecting apps and devices like Orchem My Eye are not going to be able to do that. They simply are like red. And sometimes it's like actually hot pink, but you're like, it is red. Like they're not perfect. So you can use them. They're not gonna nail it every time. And if it is important to you to really nail it, I would suggest using like Ira, Be My Eyes or FaceTime a loved one to get the real deets. I just thought of another one after I stopped filming. I'm so sorry. Okay, also, newer future guide dog users, just be warned, if you wear a long dress, your guide dog is likely to step on it. Also, if you're walking through like a muddy environment with them, their back paws will kick up the schmutz onto the back of you, uh, like your legs and stuff. So be warned. And if you really care about the fur, try to align your outfits with the color of the fur your dog has. I don't care. But I do know some of my blind friends with guide dogs, like if they have a golden dog, they'll try to wear more nude colors on the bottom. But your left thigh, just know, girl, it's the commitment. Like, you're always going to have fur there. I just accept it. It's cute. It's a little, little love left behind from my furry friends. And that is it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and had fun. Honestly, I had a lot of fun making it. I feel like you probably saw my passion coming out, uh, but I can't be tamed. I cannot be tamed. I actually had a really bad day yesterday. Really bad. Story time to come one day. Uh, and so I went to the mall because I wanted to get Elton John out like working. And that's a place that brings me joy. Um, so I went window shopping. I was like daydreaming about nice fancy handbags. And so I was like looking at all these fancy handbags. I did not buy a thing, but I was like making myself joyful by looking at pretty bags and trying them on. And it was a lot of fun. And then what did I do last night? I thought I was gonna have nightmares all night about my bad day. Girl, in my dreams, I went to Prada, Miu Miu, and Gucci, and I found this adorable bag at Gucci. It was like a light blue with a gold smiley face on it. And I felt like that was a positive message in my dream to me. Be happy, Molly. And I, oh, I tried on this like very cute, like Sherwin pink Miu Miu bag in the dream. It was a good dream. So that's how much I love fashion and I am obsessed. So I'm sorry if this video was actually like basic and boring and not interesting or helpful, but I hope it was to somebody. Even if it wasn't to you watching this, I hope it was to somebody else. And anybody who has advice for fellow blind fashion lovers, share it down below. Even if you think it's basic and not helpful, it might be to somebody. So share it, this is a community. We all love to learn from each other and hopefully I'll maybe even learn some more things from one of you. Thank you guys, I love you. And for another fashion video, click over here to see when I tried on kids clothes or click over here for one of my absolutely ruthless fashion reviews. Bye. What do you have to say?